Hello people, welcome back to Goodly. My name is Chandeep Chhabra. In the last two videos, we have done a couple of DAX versus Excel kind of questions. In the first video, I gave you three questions to solve using Excel. And I said that I'm going to solve these three questions using DAX. And then in the second video, I did solve those three questions using Excel and DAX and brought out the pain that one has to go through while solving problems in Excel using the conventional pivot tables and formulas and things like that. Now, in this video, I particularly want to take you a level up and show you more sophisticated, more complicated problems that I have solved using DAX. If you ask me, I don't even know how would I actually solve them in Excel and make sure that I am working with the large data and the formulas are dynamic and I don't do any kind of rough and patchy work and all that kind of things. I don't even know how would I actually approach these problems in Excel. I mean, one could argue that I could do it, but it will involve a lot of work. So why don't you actually take a look at these problems and decide for yourself that DAX is a whole lot better as compared to Excel. Now, before I go ahead and proceed and show you the three examples that I have, I have three things that you should keep in mind. Thing number one is that I'm just going to show you the problem and the solution. I will not exactly discuss the DAX that I've written step by step and help you learn that. This is not one of those DAX tutorials. This is just a demonstration of the power of DAX. That's point number one. Point number two is please do not get intimidated once you take a look at the DAX that I've written. Everybody starts with a zero. I still remember the days when I was not able to write a simple if statement in DAX. So do not get intimidated by DAX. Point number three is that do not also get swayed away by the visuals that I have created. It might look pretty, it might not, but if it looks pretty to you, visuals are very, very easy to create in Power BI. What you should be actually spending time and money on is building the capabilities on data models modeling and DAX, which is going to help you out in the future. So without wasting any further time, let's just go take a look at the three visuals and the problems that I've solved using DAX. All right. So the first one that I want to talk about is the coronavirus dashboard that I created just a few months ago. And this was created just to kind of track the spread of coronavirus in India. It's been one of the most popular and most downloaded dashboards on my site. So just take a look at this dashboard. I particularly want to take you through two calculations or two DAX measures. Uh, that I have written to do very specific tasks. The first one was the ability to project the data in the future through DAX. So you can see that uh, as of now, this dashboard has been updated until the 6th of August, which is until today. And that's where the data ends. Now I can using DAX formulas project in the future that what are the cases going to be. Now, once you kind of build projections, you have to kind of assume a growth rate on which the number is going to grow. So I actually gave the user the ability to select the user can actually go take a look at the growth rate in the last 15 days and have that as the future growth rate or the user can actually pick up his own custom growth rate and then project the future as to how many cases are we going to grow. So here we have a small little drop down here and in that particular drop down, the user can actually select the last 15 days uh, growth rate of the cases and that that's how the cases are going to be projected in the future or he can pick up his own custom growth rate going up till 20% growth day on day on day. And as of now, 15 days compound has been selected. If you want to take a look at what has been the growth in the COVID cases in India, it has been about 3.3% and in the future, for about a month from now, the cases also grow at 3.3% every single day. So that's a pretty interesting dashboard. And you can what you can also do is this calculation that I have built is dynamic. That means if I end up clicking on a particular state, uh, which is let's say a Maharashtra, the highest number of cases, I can also do the same thing for Maharashtra once I have kind of built the calculation. So I can also project the number of cases for Maharashtra to see that if the cases grow in the same rate as they were in the last 15 days or my own custom growth rate, what are the cases going to be in the future. So that was one calculation that I built. It was pretty interesting. If you want to take a look at the DAX measure for that, I can just show you. So that DAX measure, I believe is projections. All right. So that was a DAX measure that I wrote to project the number of cases. And you can just take a look at that. If you want to actually download this particular dashboard, I'm just going to leave a link to the entire video that I have done and also the link to download the dashboard in case you want to take a look at the dashboard and see all the DAX measures that I have done simple or complicated. You can just take a look at all of that. The other calculation that I want to show you is pretty interesting, which is where I kind of distribute the number of cases in the days in which they kind of grew. So let's just say, take a look at this table that we have here. Let me just cancel the filter. All right. So take a look at this table that we have here. So we have zero to 100 cases 
and from 0 to 100 cases it took the entire country 44 days and then from 101 to 1000 cases it took 14 days then from 1000 to 5000 it took 10 days and then so on and so forth so we now in this particular bracket and it's just been one single day that we have crossed 2 million cases in the country so this was a pretty interesting calculation because I had to kind of take a look at the last bucket always take a look at the last bucket stop it there and then see that how many days are we going to take in the new bucket until we kind of reach the you know threshold in that new bucket and then move on to the next bucket so this was a pretty interesting calculation again in case you want to take a look at the DAX the DAX is called I think it's a measure called distribution and you can take a look at that that was pretty long measure that I wrote and you can actually take a look at that measure so again do not get intimidated by these measures you will take time to kind of get to a level where you start writing these kind of calculations but this is all possible using DAX now one of the interesting things that I can do in this particular dashboard if I have written there that DAX measure is that I can actually take a look at this particular table not only for the entire country but for a particular state as well so I stay in Haryana if I could just maybe click on the state of Haryana and I can now take a look at the entire uh, table for Haryana only so for Haryana 0 to 100 cases were reached in 67 days 45 days to reach 1000 cases 19 days to reach 5000 cases and we are nearly about in this particular bracket above 25,000 but still haven't reached under 100,000 cases so yeah it's pretty interesting I mean you can actually make the calculation dynamic and that was the point that I spoke about in the last video that means using DAX your calculations become portable and they become dynamic alright so the second one is an invoice and receivable template I created this template on a request of a friend of mine he was facing a very peculiar problem and let me explain the problem first to you and then we'll take a look at the dashboard so there is a client that actually gives out invoices to his customers but his customers do not pay against a particular invoice so if you are maybe raising invoice number 100 the customer will not pay you against that particular invoice and he will just pay you lump sum and now when you kind of get a lump sum money from the customer you have to take that money and set off the invoices and the method that you use to set off the invoices is the FIFO method that means the invoices that you raised first will be set off first and then the invoices that you raise later will be set off later so that's how this went to add to the problem the customer can actually also pay you against a particular invoice or he can just pay you in lump sum so if the customer actually pays you against an invoice you should actually settle it against the invoice but if the customer pays you lump sum amount of money without mentioning what invoice number is it against you actually have to start setting off the amount that you received using FIFO method and start cancelling how many invoices have been cleared right and I hope you got the idea so take a look at this customer we have aura navigations here we have done the total billing of $24,420 until the May of 2018 we have received no money from the customer as of now let's just take a look at what happens the next month so if I maybe just click on the month of June here the customer actually pays us some money uh, he actually pays us 20 and 50 but that 20 and 50 is paid against a specific invoice and that gets settled right here so the amount was 20 and 50 the receipt was 20 and 50 and the balance is zero nothing all right now let's just take a look at the month of July so once we kind of move on July you see that we have again some receipts here but these are general receipts I mean these are lump sum receipts that we received from the customer doesn't have the invoice number so I have to use the FIFO method and start cancelling the invoices from the first invoice the first date and start cancelling that how many invoices are cleared now and how many invoices are still pending so take a look I start from the first date and over here the first invoice was 420 I cancel that because I have received 1870 the second invoice was 1045 I cancel that because I still have money left now even if I add these two I still have some money left and then I'm gonna cancel the third invoice but the third invoice is not gonna get cancelled fully it's just going to be cancelled partially and that is the balance which is still pending against the third invoice and it's been pending for so many days so if you when you kind of move on into this it kind of cancels the invoices uh, as in when you kind of receive the money from the customer and using a FIFO method so that was a pretty tricky calculation that I had to do using DAX now if you ask me to do that calculation in Excel I don't even know how to actually start approaching this in Excel using robust techniques that get refreshed and automated on their own so if you want to take a look at the calculation all right so here is the calculation it's a pretty long measure nearly about 50 odd rows of calculation but please don't get intimidated by this if you're starting out I'm just saying it again and again uh, you would be able to eventually build something like this but uh, this is 
I'm just giving you the possibilities of what you can actually do with DAX. But yeah, here is the calculation. It was a pretty complicated data model that I had to kind of construct and then carry out all these FIFO calculations using DAX. All right, the last one has to do with human resources, training and development and that sort of stuff. This dashboard I created for HR people who are into the training business and they do a lot of trainings for their employees and they collect a lot of data regarding the trainings that they have done, the cost that they have incurred and that kind of stuff. And they want to take a look at all of the metrics in a single dashboard this is again a template available on my blog in case you want to take a look at you can take a look at that but from this template I actually want to discuss one calculation that a lot of people like a lot so this calculation is about cost leak so when you are doing a training program for the employee and you maybe do a very expensive program for the employee you definitely want the employee to stay back in the company use the training that he or she has done and then use it to the benefit of the company but if you think that the employees are doing the trainings and then leaving the company right away you want to take a look at that cost that is being leaked which is actually a cost leak because you trained the employee and the employee left the company so that calculation was done in this particular dashboard and let's just take a look at that particular calculation so here these are all the employees who have actually done the training and have left the company within three months of the date of the training so let's just say that if you're trained today and within three months you just leave the company so you will be kind of shown here in case you have done that so you can actually take a look at the total cost that one has incurred the total cost leak if you have left before three months and you can also finally distribute that total 81,000 rupees or $81,000 into specific employees and specific training programs that each employee has done and how much money have you wasted. So actually these were the four people. So employee number one, employee number two, employee number three and employee number four. These people are actually those people who have done the trainings and then left the company. And if you want to dive deeper as to which training programs have they done and how much money have you spent on each single employee and each single training, you can actually take a look at this particular table. So we have the employee code, we have the name of the program that they have done, we have the training as to um, you know when they were trained and this training date has to be within the last three months and then how much money have we actually spent on each and every training program. And this actually totals up and this is nearly 81,000 and that's what you get to see here. Now the benefit of this particular calculation is that it will actually automatically change if I kind of change the level here or if I maybe change the business vertical here or if I maybe change the month here I will get to see the data of that particular month. The second benefit which is again the benefit of DAX is that I can change the three months so somebody can say hey we don't we don't really track for three months one month is good enough if the employee stays for one month after he or she has done the training I'll be good to go or some people can say hey this this should actually be six months so this can actually be edited so let me just show you the DAX calculation that I have written all right so that's a pretty small measure here and you can actually change the last period here so if you actually make this as six this is actually going to go six months behind and then take a look at all the people who have left and also been trained and how much money have you wasted or cost leak has been done on those kind of people so this was a pretty interesting calculation but there are a lot of other calculations in this particular dashboard which can be very very helpful all right so those were the three examples personally speaking since the time that I have started using DAX and started solving problems using DAX as compared to Excel pivot tables or formulas I personally have been pretty swayed away by its analytical power and the speed in which you can kind of build the calculations and the calculations are portable it has impressed me a lot and also the people whom I have delivered these these products and these dashboards too now a lot of people kind of email me and ask me hey how much time did you take to learn DAX or how can I learn DAX and things like that so personal questions are around my DAX learning journey so maybe I think I can just put together a quick video on that and you know help you understand that how did I kind of start learning DAX what were my tools maybe and what did I use to learn DAX and all of that things together I can maybe make another video on that but in this video I just wanted to show you three examples out of you know many many examples that I have created in the past where I've solved very very complicated problems using DAX as compared to Excel formulas or pivot tables I hope you like this one hopefully I'll make another video on my DAX journey soon probably in about two odd days or so and I will keep you posted on that one as well thanks so much for sticking around looking through all of this video in the end and I will see you soon bye